Howdy, howdy. 4.6, completing the square. How do we use completing the square to write quadratics in vertex form? And how do we use completing the square to solve the quadratics? So remember, like I said in our last um, notes, there are multiple ways of solving quadratics. We can solve by factoring. We can solve by um, square roots. We can solve by quadratic formula. And we can also now solve by completing the square. So if you think about the term or the title, completing the square, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We are trying to create a perfect square trinomial out of what has been given to us. Um, because when we have that perfect square trinomial, um, we can easily put it into vertex form because it is just that one factor squared, um, and that's in vertex form. So if our, um, the steps for completing the square for a vertex form, if our a value is greater than one, we need to factor it out of our first two terms, just the first two terms. So that's the one with the x squared and the one with the x. So remember, everything given to you should be in standard form. So that a value should be the first thing you see. It's the coefficient um, of the x squared term. So if it's greater than one, factor it out of the first two firms, uh, first two terms. If it is equal to one, then we are good to go to the next step. We're going to put a plus blank after the second term and a minus blank after the last term. So essentially we're adding a number to, uh, between the second and third term to create that perfect square trinomial. But if I add a number to my equation, then I also need to subtract that same number because if I don't, then I'm creating this whole new equation. It's not balanced if you wanna think of it that way. Um, the number in that blank is going to be your B value divided by two squared. So half of the B value squared every single time. Um, when you add that third, that term in, um, that b over 2 squared term in, that is going to create your perfect square trinomial with the first three terms. So it's always going to factor into x uh, minus that b over 2 number squared. And so then, like I said, it'll be in vertex form. So sometimes it's just easier to dive in and start working an example. So if we notice for a, b, and c, a and B both have an A value of 1, which is what we're going to see most of the time when completing the square, but there are times where our A value is not 1, and that is for C, that A value is bigger than 1. So here we go. Because my A value is equal to 1 in part A, I don't have to factor anything out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plus blank after the second term and a minus blank after the last term. So that's going to get me F of X is equal to X squared minus 8X plus something, plus four, minus something. So what goes in those blanks are the exact same number because if I add it, I also need to subtract it. So what goes in the blank? It's gonna be our B value divided by two squared. Well, our B value is negative eight. So half of negative eight is negative four. Negative four squared is a positive 16. So I added 16, I also subtract 16. Now that I've added in that number, my first three terms, x squared minus 8x plus 16, that is a perfect square trinomial, okay? So that's going to factor into x minus 4 squared because um, if I FOIL that out, I would get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Then I just combine my last two terms. A positive 4 minus 16 is going to be a negative 12. And so this looks, should look very familiar to you. This is in vertex form. This means there is no vertical stretch or compression, no horizontal stretch or compression, no reflections. However, it has been shifted to the right four units and down 12 units. And there we have it. Completing the square to vertex form. Let's try it again. So again, my A value is one, so I don't need to factor anything out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a blank after the second term and a minus after the last term, okay? So what goes in the blank? Half of my B value squared. So half of my B value is negative three. Negative three squared is a positive nine. So plus nine, minus nine. The first three terms is a perfect square trinomial factoring into X minus three squared. Now I just combine my last two terms 
to get that negative 11, and now I have it in vertex form. Pretty easy, right? Don't you wish you would have had this when we were graphing? Now you can take something in standard form, and you don't have to use the axis asymmetry formula of opposite of b over 2a, and da 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 You can just roll with completing the square, and then it's in vertex form. Now let's try one when our a value is not 1. So here my a value is 2. So what I need to do is I need to factor it out the first two terms. So this is going to be f of x equals 2 times x squared minus 12x. And then that minus 15 stays. It is not the first two terms, so it's going to stay that way. So now I'm following the same process. I'm still going to add a blank after that second term, so right here. And I'm going to subtract that number over here. Now we've got to be careful this time. Working inside our parentheses, we want to create that perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to take half of negative 12, which is negative 6, square it to get my 36. But let's think about what I'm really adding to this problem. I didn't just add 36. I added 36 times 2. Because that 36 is inside the parentheses that's being multiplied by 2. So if I distributed that 2 to everybody inside, it wouldn't be just 36. It would be 72. Okay? you got to be careful with these. What you add inside your parentheses, you need to then multiply with that factor that you took out for this last term. Okay? So be careful. I've made so many mistakes with that point. So be careful. From here on out, you're doing the exact same thing. So you're still going to have the 2 in front. What's inside is a perfect square trinomial, x minus 6 squared. And then combining those last terms, that's going to be a minus 87. So this is one where we do now have a vertical stretch, shifted to the right 6 and down 87 units. And there we go. Okay. Awesome. Now, we're going to do the same process, completing the square, but this time we're going to use it to actually solve. What we were doing here is we were just converting from one format to another. So we were starting in standard and we converted it to vertex by completing the square. Now we're going to take what's in standard form and we're actually going to solve it using completing the square. So in this um, process, we want to actually move that C term to the other side. So we're going to be given it most likely um, in standard form where it's set equal to zero because that's how it normally starts when solving for all the other um, processes. But for this time, we actually do want to move that C over. So then after that, we're following the same steps. If the A value is greater than one, factor it out. Um, if not, roll to the next step, which is putting a blank, a plus blank, um, on both sides of the equations. And then the blank is still half of b squared. So let's start here. First step is add the c to the other side. So I'm adding 5. And so this is what I have. My a value is 1, so I don't need to factor anything out. So what I want to do now is I want to create a perfect square trinomial on the right-hand side. So I'm going to take half of my b value, which is negative 2, and square it to get a positive 4. Well, if I add 4 to the right-hand side, I need to add 4 to the left-hand side. So this is going to be the 5 plus that 4 that I just added. And so now I know that this is 9 equals my perfect square trinomial. And as you know, we can solve by square roots. So I take the square root on both sides, I get plus or minus 3 equals x minus 2, which means if I add 2, 2 plus 3 is going to give me x is 5, and then 2 minus 3 is going to give me x is negative 1. And so then those are my two values of x. So uh, very similar to or using the process of solving by square root, we just have to complete the square first. We have to make that perfect square trinomial and then will be solving by square roots. So let's try it again. This time for B and C, both of them have an A value that's greater than 1. So remember, when we're solving, we're still going to move that C term over to the other side. So I'm going to add 8 to the other side. So now I have 8 equals 2x squared minus 4x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 2 on the right-hand side. I'm leaving myself some space because I know I'm going to create the perfect square trinomial next. So 
what is half of my b value squared? Well, half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Remember, I'm not going to add 1 over here because that 1 is actually being multiplied by 2. So I have to add 2. Anytime you factor out a number when a value is greater than 1, whatever you add inside those parentheses gets multiplied with that a value. So be careful. And so now we just um, simplify, factor, and then solve. So this time we're going to divide by 2 first. And then we're going to take the square root. So I get a plus or minus square root of 5 equals x minus 1. So that means x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. And that is two real answers. 1 plus radical 5 and 1 minus radical 5. And then the last one. Another one with an a value bigger than 1. So first step when solving is move my c value. So I add 7 to both sides. Next step is to factor out the a value. Remember, I always want to leave myself some space inside that parenthesis because my goal is to complete the square. It's to make a perfect square trinomial. Now, this one's going to be a little gross. I don't know if you saw, but all of this whole time, our b values were even. How nice was that? Because if I take half of an even number, I still get a whole number. Half of negative 8 was negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. Half of negative 6, negative 3. Negative 3 squared, 9. Half of the negative 12 was negative 6. Half of the negative 4 was a negative 2. Half of the negative 2 was a negative 1. So, oh, excuse me. So this is the first time where we encounter an odd number. We still need to take half of it. So half of negative 3 is negative 1 and a half, or negative 3 over 2. And then I need to square that value. When I square a negative 3 over 2, I'm squaring the top and I'm squaring the bottom. 9 over 4. So I'm adding 9 over 4. But remember, I'm not really adding 9 over 4. I'm adding 9 over 4 times 3. So then I need to multiply this by 3 over 1, which is going to be 27 over 4. So then I'm adding... I'm just looking at my answer key, and I think I made a mistake on the answer key. That's all right. Okay, so then I'm adding that 27 over 4 to the other side. So I have 7 plus 27 over 4 equals 3 times x minus 3 halves squared. Let me erase all my extra work. Okay, and so then I need to combine some like terms and solve. So... I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to convert 7 to a fraction of 4. So that'll be 28 over 4 plus 27 over 4, which is going to give me, I'm just going to take up all this space. Who cares? Okay. So then <clears throat> 27 plus 28 over 4, that's going to be, oh my God. Oh, 28, that'd be, I can't think right now. 55, 3x minus 3 over 2 squared. Okay, so now we actually have to solve. So this is where it's going to get a little ugly. So then I am dividing by 3 on both sides. So when I divide by 3 on the right side, I just get this, obviously. When I divide by 3 on the left-hand side, 54, 55 divided by 4 times 1 third is going to be 55 over 12. So that's 55 over 12. Then I have to take the square root. So that's plus or minus the square root of 55 over 12 equals x minus 3 over 2. Um, technically, I can simplify um, this square root. I can't simplify the square root of 55 because it's just 5 and 11. So it is still going to be plus or minus the square root of 55. But at the bottom, I can simplify that to 2 radical 3. And then that equals x minus 3 over 2. And so then the last thing I need to do is add 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 55 over 2 radical 3 is equal to x. Very, very ugly. I understand that. It kind of was because 
um, that B term was not even. Um, and it was just ugly numbers. So same process, just a little bit harder number wise. Um, and there you have it.